loving greetings to you. My name is Paul Friedman. If you're visiting this channel for the first time, a very warm and special welcome to you. This is where you learn about marriage and everyone thinks, oh yeah, I know about marriage. And with a 55% divorce rate, I can tell you that chances are you don't. In fact, I used to be a divorce mediator and I know that people don't understand marriage. I didn't understand marriage either until, and this is 22 years ago, until I had a couple ask me to help them save their marriage. They went the route. They came to me as a divorce mediator because their marriage counseling failed. And they thought as a communications expert, I could probably help them. So I went to my friends who are marriage counselors and I said, so how should I do this? And he said, oh, you just listen to them, see if you can help negotiate some of their problems and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, hmm, that doesn't sound like it's gonna really help save their marriage. So I started diving deep into what is marriage all about. And what I discovered is earth shattering. It's sort of like what Galileo discovered with his telescope, that the world wasn't the center of the universe. I discovered that the knowledge that we have about marriage in the world is all wrong. It's just plain wrong, including the knowledge that we have of the mind, of ourselves as souls. I mean, just for instance, and this is not religious, Yes, I'm a meditator and it's a very spiritual thing, marriage, but I discovered that the whole thing about emotions is crazy. It's, it's part of the software of the mind. We're not the mind, we're souls. We have a mind, we have a body. And I grew up hearing that I had a soul and the arguments were, well, you know, do you have a soul or not? And it's just, all of it is wrong, it's so insane. So this topic is five of the worst things a husband can do to his wife is a very compelling topic because I could get into just how much your marriage is impacted through a lack of knowledge. You're not a bad person. And if you're looking up this topic, it's because you're just not sure what's going on. And I'm going to help you with this. Now, you should definitely subscribe to the channel. You should go to our website and see what else we have, our offerings. We have a lot of free stuff and a lot of our offerings are very affordable. So let's get into this. Five of the worst things a husband can do to his wife. This is not going to be funny, okay? And you might want to write these things down. It won't hurt you. The mind doesn't want you to remember them, by the way. So number one, and this is number one in that it is the biggest, biggest worst thing that you can do to your wife. And that is to demonstrate anger. Now, I didn't say get angry at her. I said to demonstrate anger. Why? Well, let's take a look at ourselves from sort of an outside point of view and get an understanding of what we are. Yes, we are souls. We have a mind. We have a body. The body that we have is either male or female, and it has a lot of attributes that go along with each particular gender. And there is sort of a written code in the DNA of if you're a male, you're this way. If you're a female, you're that way. And some people will say, oh, how insulting. Well, really, if you are a man, you cannot have a baby. I'm sorry. If you're a woman, you do not have a penis. It's just the way it is. And estrogen and testosterone, all these things that, we, that are behind the scenes that we're aware of now, with science tells us that there's a lot of the script written. Now, part of being a man is that we have more testosterone than women. And so we have the ability to be angry. Why? 
Why is it set up that way? Well, we have to look at our biology and the human body is sort of an animal body to a degree. It's not completely. We are created differently than animals, but we have some of the same traits. For instance, in order to procreate, we are the ones who inseminate the woman and like that. What goes along with that is that we are the defenders. We are the warriors in this micro society. And so anger is a necessary component when you are physiologically called upon to defend your family. Now, I know we live in a modern age and all of that, and it rarely happens, but it's still there biologically. And there's a lot of things that we have that we don't use anymore. But the problem is that the anger has remained in place. So as a defender, your anger is there, it has a purpose. Your anger is there to protect. Well, what is that saying about your wife? It's saying that she will tend to retreat unless she's a mother defending her babies. She'll tend to retreat from danger where you will confront, where you will face danger and anger is part of that. But in her retreat, her system is designed to be repulsed by anger, to see that as a danger signal. Remember, we still have the drive to survive going on in the background all the time. And so anger for her is this heavy duty warning sign that shuts her down. She's not going to be in, and here's where we get to the point. She's not going to feel love towards that person who is expressing anger towards her, right? You don't, she doesn't, nobody feels reactively in love towards someone who is angry, expressing anger. Now, clearly the worst is to express anger towards her. There is no nice way to express anger towards her, but her subconscious reactions will still take place even if you're expressing anger towards someone else. Now, our women folk in the world have been trained to be dulled by this expression of anger to a large degree. And so they're not outwardly going to be so affected, but inwardly they will. Your whole goal in marriage is to be happy and slash feeling love. So anger is totally 100% undermining the very purpose that you have in your marriage. So do you go along with all of these premises? They're all there. I know you do. And if you don't think about it more, because this is really calculated, this is not something that I've made up and you don't need to experience it, but I'm sure you have. So what degree do you go? And by the way, this is the very first thing that we have in our course for men. We have courses when, when your marriage is really off the rails and you need to resuscitate it. We have a course for men. We also have a course for women. And this is the very first thing in the course for men where I go into anger in great depth and basically no more anger. Now, expressing it, and when I say no more anger, I also have methods for eliminating anger, which is part of the course, because a lot of people these days, they talk about 
managing anger. I don't believe in that. Why manage it when you have full control over your mind? Remember, it's not you, it's a possession. So what will she pick up as anger that will close off her heart, which is the last thing you want to happen? Well, little things will do it because it's little things that manifest when you're feeling angry. Rolling your eyes, sneering, lowering your voice. There's so many ways and you may have your own way. Get rid of it entirely. And if you say, well, but I'm feeling angry. Well, that's the problem. You have to get rid of anger. Just because you're feeling it doesn't mean it's acceptable. And it doesn't mean you have to put up with it. Feeling anger also blocks off your heart. So that's the biggest. That's number one. So if you want to be done, because that's plenty, that's fine. Like the video and take care. Number two. One of the worst things you could do, number two, is to be condescending. Now, this is easy for us to be, as men, to be condescending towards women because we live in a material world where physical strength has a greater, um, there's people are more aware of physical strength than mental strength or strength of the heart and all of that. And so we can get cocky as men, we could forget, and we could start treating our wives in ways that they're the last way we should be treating our wife. We could make fun of them because they don't have a good sense of direction. We could make fun of them because they made a mathematical error. And look, I know these are generalizations. I'm just giving you examples. Now, the worst problem for us is that we have been trained by our marriage teachers. Who are our marriage teachers? It's amazing. Our marriage teachers are sitcoms, movies, books, articles, nonsense stuff, where teasing your wife gets a laugh on a sitcom. They have canned laughter. So, in real life, though, if you tease your wife, she ain't going to be happy. She's not going to like it. If you make fun of her, she's not going to like it. Now, she may not say anything because she is not that kind of person, but she's affected. You need to understand that how you are should not be based on how she reacts. It should be based on the highest principles of expressing love. You married her out of love. You fell in love and you married her out of love and appreciation and not how she reacts to things. So check yourself before you behave, before you speak in a way that might be insulting and condescending. And I'll tell you right now, guys, Women are the superior beings in this mix. They are not the inferior. Just because we can kick their butts, they have something much more powerful than we have. And it's kind of the reason we married them. They have their connection to their heart is like right there. And we as men don't have that. We have to, we have to make that happen. We have to develop that. We have to nurture that within ourselves to open our hearts where they're right there. And I'm not talking about emotionally. And so we gravitate towards their heart because we don't have it and we need it because we're souls. And so that's a superior attribute because within that heart is peace, joy, love, love. That's where it's at. And yet, we can be condescending towards a woman. I saw this Clint Eastwood Western and the way he treated a woman was unbelievable. He basically raped her because she needed it. I mean, probably the fifties, but man, have things changed. And, and you know, these old, I'm older than you for sure. I mean, I'm 
I was born in 1951. We used to have this commercial on TV for Maxwell House Coffee and he would say to his wife, be a good little Maxwell housewife and maybe I'll keep you around. Are you kidding me right now? And so this was the thinking back then and it's not all gone. It's starting to go, but it's not all gone. So be very careful, don't be condescending. And yeah, I know more about cars than my wife. I know more about a lot of things than my wife. I watch YouTube videos about heavy machinery and construction. I love that stuff. And she, she doesn't roll her eyes outwardly because she's a really loving wife, but we have different ways of seeing things. She's not better than me. I'm not better than her. Never be condescending. That's number two. Okay, number three. This is important because one of the common problems that men have in their marriages, and I got this a lot when I worked with men individually. Interestingly, they don't like to write it down when they uh, send in their intake forms and say, I don't get enough sex in, in my marriage. They don't like to come out and say it. Very few do, but most men feel that way. There's a reason for it. And it's number three. Read, and I'm going to put it to you this way. Don't reduce sex to where it's beneath lovemaking. Intimacy is really important for your wife. But because of this mistraining by the media, by Hollywood, again, goes back to the sitcoms and the movies and all that, where sex is recreational, even when you're married. That's the world's understanding of sex, and it's messed up. Sex is actually the greatest physical way of connecting your heart with your wife. And so if you reduce it down and you could do it in a lot of ways, you know, you could just wanting to have sex so you could get off is reducing it down. You're turning it into a physiological, physiologically driven urge that doesn't even match up to what it was designed for. Think about it. Why do we have an urge to have sex? Okay. Time's up. The answer, because we are in this human body that is biologically an animal body driven for procreation. We have drives. We have to have air, water, shelter, food, and subordinate, just subordinate to these top level drives is a drive for procreation because we survive better in a community. And so that's why we want to have sex. Yeah. If we're listening to the drives and not questioning, where are you coming from drive to have sex? Then that's it. We are totally manipulated by our biology, but we're human beings. We have the ability to operate on the plane of love a heavy duty connection of our souls, not just our bodies. And we can utilize sex to achieve that. But if we don't go into it with that mindset, well, women are much more sensitive than we are. So they start to feel abused. This is where their whole thing about, oh, you just want me for my body comes from. Because that is the truth for most people. So you need to change how you see yourself, how you see your wife, lift it up. And trust me, it'll change your marriage entirely when you have a different perspective, but you got to be careful of the tail wagging the dog. You can't let the desire for sex lead the way you have to develop your devotion. You have to develop your love and all of that. Okay. Number four, 
One of the worst thing you can do to your wife is put your attention on other women. This includes porn, this includes watching women in movies, this includes checking out women at Starbucks, all of it. Once you have chosen your life's mate, she's your soul mate. No, it, they, every other woman in the world should be like a cat in the room compared to your wife. They're, they're nothing. They don't rate. They don't stand up to her. You can't look at them sexually anymore. You can't admire their beauty anymore. And I know in the world they say, oh, what's wrong with admiring her beauty? It's natural. Yeah. If you're a dog and you're looking for another dog in heat, it is natural. Don't forget the world is messed up in terms of understanding. So you have to lift yourself. Okay, number five. This is a big one too. Never criticize your wife in any way, shape or form. You don't see the world through her eyes. You don't understand things the way she understands things. And in many cases, she's right and you're wrong. And that's true. And so, it's not, it doesn't mean she's universally right and you're universally wrong, but sometimes it's that way. Mostly though, it's just a different perspective. We see things differently. I remember many, many years ago, my first wife, yes, I divorced my first wife. That's why I became a divorce mediator because I couldn't handle what I went through in the court. But my wife at that time and I went to New Orleans on a business trip. And we're walking down Bourbon Street or one of those, and I'm looking around, and I turned to my wife and I said, wow, this is totally set up as a cool marketing thing. I mean, they really got it right. And she just burst out laughing. And I go, what? And she says, I was just thinking how romantic it is. <laughs> it just shows. She was right. I was right. And did I criticize her for thinking like that? Actually, I did, because I didn't know any better in those days. But she was right. So never, never, ever. And don't just not criticize her outwardly, but check your thinking. You know, actions come from thought and feeling. Learn to make your mind yours. This is such a big deal in our world that we're not taught this. And I discovered this, I've been meditating since 1972 and yet I didn't know this until I started getting into this marriage help stuff. And I wanted to get to the bottom of why we behave the way we behave and I realized, wow, we are not our mind. You know, they say, oh, if I tell you never to think of an elephant, you're going to be thinking of an elephant all day. That isn't true. I have control over my mind. Now, it takes time to even begin to master your mind, but it's on us to do that. And I'll tell you why. Because you cannot even be happy unless you own your mind. Fleeting happiness, sure, but that internal, strong, joy that you are as a soul. No, you can't have that until you learn to manage the mind, master the mind, and this was a big deal. And this is also right after we talk about anger in the Course for Men, we talk about how to master your mind. I even have a technique for it and all that. It's critical. Eventually they'll be teaching about this stuff in school, but for now, the marriage foundation is the cutting edge. So this is who we are. This is what we do. Hopefully this was useful and you like this video. You could leave a comment if it's a nice comment. If it's not, don't leave it. I don't want to read it. And I hope you are subscribing now. Hope you come back and visit. And remember, we are here for you. Go to our website, see what we have to offer because 
Your marriage is intended to bring you unbelievable joy. It is. And those who follow our principles, I didn't invent these principles, I discovered them. You'll find that joy in your marriage and you'll be floating like I am. And like many, many, many people, that we've had thousands of people take the course. And so it's so beneficial. All right, I'm Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation. I appreciate you. God bless you and take care. Thank you.